The NBA on TNT comes to you from the First Union Center in Philadelphia as Michael Jordan brings his struggling Washington Wizards to the city of brotherly love. Wizards have lost 10 of 13 games and go against the defending Eastern Conference champion, the Philadelphia 76ers, who have finally found their footing. They have won seven and dropped six. And welcome everyone to Philadelphia. I'm Dick Stockton along with Hubie Brown and Craig Sager. The Sixers starting out 0-5 on the year. And then Allen Iverson returned from injury. They won seven straight games before a road loss in Toronto on Sunday. And this team seems to be on its way right now. But Hubie, I don't remember a team that got to the finals that had so many changes from one year to the next. Oh, you're right on, Dick. Only five players remain from that playoff roster. Nine have departed. Three is free agent, six in trades. They're starting corners. Lynch and Hill, both have departed. Replaced by Matt Harpering, Derek Coleman. This is training camp all over. While they learn one another, the defense has been outstanding. They are first in fewest points. They are second field goal percentage against. How about second in three-point percentage? And then also a beautiful plus 4.5 in scoring. Now they have four players right now from Iverson, Coleman, McKee, and Harpering average between 13 and 26 points a game. That's outstanding. Big question mark here, the depth. Second unit, will it be good enough to make a major contribution? And tonight, Hubie, they're playing a team that beat them back on November 3rd without, of course, Allen Iverson. So Washington had the leg up on the 76ers. But Michael Jordan finally lashed out at his teammates in frustration last night after an embarrassing 19-point loss to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, Michael Jordan comes in sixth in the NBA in scoring right now, but uh, obviously not happy with the support he's getting. Well, Michael can be upset all that he wants, but let's just be realistic here. A year ago, 19 wins. They lack a proven back-to-the-basket post-up player other than Michael Jordan. Currently, of the 10-man rotation, seven players are shooting 40% or in the low 30s. Now, let's get to a happy note. Let's talk about Michael Jordan. Now, where is he from his career? You can see the minutes are the same. The points, sure, he's down seven. The major place is in the shooting percentage, whether it's the... Uh, tendonitis in the wrist, in the knee, whatever. Not having any problem getting off shots, he's not getting to the foul line only six a game. But if this team is going to win, they are 27th in field goal percentage, 41%. That must improve. At the defensive end of the floor, they're also 27th in field goal percentage against, 46%. Now, I don't care whether you're young or old, the defense has got to get there, and then the field goal percentage must go up. Hey, and that's easier said than done. And especially against this team tonight. So, coming up, the wizard to watch is not Harry Potter tonight. It's Michael Jordan. And when we return, Ernie Johnson will take over from our studios in Atlanta. The Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, one of the uh, great landmarks of uh, this city. As we come back to First Union Center in Philadelphia in the starting lineup for tonight's game for the Wizards. Christian Leitner, Michael Jordan, and Jahidi White up front. And it was uh, Richard Hamilton and Chris Whitney in the backcourt. And we'll call him Jahidi White now from now on. It'll be Derek Coleman, Matt Harpering, Dikembe Mutombo, Allen Iverson, and Aaron McKee. And now we'll also say Craig Sager, take it away. Well, thank you. Michael Jordan is struggling with tendonitis in his right knee, an inflammation of the tissue that holds muscle to the bone. It bothered him all summer and was aggravated when he hyperextended his knee in a preseason game against Boston. Playing 38 minutes a game, it is getting worse. In addition to the pain, Michael has no lift or power. Now on the lift is on the jump shot. There's no consistency. Oftentimes you'll see the elevation isn't there, and as a result, the shot is coming up short. As for the strength, the classic move, the one he used against Brian Russell in Utah, where he begins to drive to the right, it crosses over to the left, it goes up and over for the fadeaway. That shot that was impossible to stop, that shot is now getting blocked. Obviously, Michael isn't making any excuses, but age and tendonitis are robbing him of his athletic ability and his strength. Nick, give me. All right, 18 points last night and 31 minutes, the second fewest he has played this year. And uh, 
Doug Collins making a concerted effort with the team playing uh, the second of four games in five nights to limit it to the mid-30s. Well, this was all expected before the season started. The talent base is weak. We know that they have a lot of backup players if you're talking about a second-round playoff team. They're trying to play without post-up people other than Michael, and the team has got to get it together, Dick. Better defense, more shot attempts off of forced turnovers, and then let's see them defend at the other end. Well, they were uninspired, and Doug Collins said lifeless in their loss to Cleveland, scoring 75 points, the fewest that they have accounted for all year. The 76ers... are trying to uh, move to within less than the two-game deficit they have with New Jersey in the Atlantic Division. Underway, and we want to welcome those watching in Canada on TSN. Controlled by Washington. Hamilton. And Michael Jordan hits the first shot on the turnaround. Now that was beautiful. They ran Michael up the lane off of a double screen. When the shot... The pass was not there. He just reversed and went right back down the lane, and Matt Harpling was trailing. Aaron McKee, who will come off the bench when Eric Snow comes back into action. Here is Derek Coleman with a drive and a feed to Matumbo on the baseline. Yeah, that's one of the big pluses of Derek Coleman. He's an outstanding passer in traffic, never mind the 15 points and the 10 rebounds. See, he'll make the play, and these two guys, by the end of the season, are really going to be a handful in the Eastern Conference at playoff time. And by that, we mean Matumbo and Coleman. And Larry Brown, who had Coleman before when he first uh, took over the job and then was traded, said that he has never really had a problem with him. He always wanted him back, and now he has Derek Coleman. And uh, you're absolutely right. He'll add some uh, presence underneath offensively. Well, up front, off a year ago, when you say Harpering, Matumbo, and Coleman, there's better rebounding and there is better scoring than a year ago. Now, the overall defense is not there because of foot quickness. Lynch and Hill allowed them to trap, go down the floor, force turnovers, and be right at the top of the league for a number of years. Problem with a wet floor, and they had to wipe the floor, and uh, Hugh Hollins checking uh, with Leon Wood, Scott Wall, the other official, to make sure that uh, the corners are dry. Well, you were asking about that miss that we were watching yeah, well, during, during the introduction. During the introductions, uh, <laughs> I thought it was uh, up with people, and we had a big uh, Super Bowl like halftime show. Up with show. people. Ooh, yeah. are we dating ourselves? Yeah. No, I think they come back every other year. Here's Hamilton, and Hamilton guarded by McKee. Leitner defended on the outside by the big man, Matumbo, who switches off to Hamilton. Nine on the shot clock. Here's Christian Leitner, who hits. And as Doug Collins says, if he's into the game, we're going to get a lot of mileage from late. Oh, you got to love him. I mean, he's shooting 48%. He's your third leading scorer on the team, and he does not force anything. Here is uh, Derek Coleman, defended by Leitner. Here is Iverson, and uh, Whitney defending against Iverson. Good pass inside to Harpring, who lays it in. Harpring is going to be a garbage man. You know that the main emphasis here will be McKee, Iverson, and then Coleman. But you have to pay attention to Harper because he is very strong and very energetic. He's going to pick up a lot of garbage. Michael Jordan. That's the Jordan of old with that line, ride, line drive shot in which the twine hardly moves. And the Wizards lead 6-4. to four. Jordan shooting 40% from the field. Did not go to the line last night, and he's been over 80% from there. Allen Iverson connects on his first shot of the game. Well, Iverson's attempting 27 shots a game. He's only shooting 32%. Larry's on him because he thinks a lot of the shots are bad percentage shots. Well, let's see as we go through this year how it calms down here. Neither team has missed yet. Both squads are three for three. Michael George with a fake around Iverson and uh, try to get... Uh, a rim or a foul and got neither and the ball will be turned over to the Sixers. You were right on Dick. He was looking for the foul. When he switches hands here, just watch as he goes by. He tries to avoid the defense by switching hands. He thought he was going to get the call. Just the start of things here at the First Union Center. The Wizards beat the 76ers 90 to 76 back in November. They didn't have Philadelphia Allen Iverson who now has five points after hitting the three. He's now six for 36 and three. That's a nice little jump over 14%.
but Lowry would just hope that he would take his game into the painted area a little more. Michael Jordan misses, and the Sixers run it out with a three-point lead, nice. and here is Iverson with the jumper. Iverson is hot. He has seven points, and the 76ers have not missed their first five shots from the field. Well, I like in the early going, the big men for the Sixers are running the court hard. A little more than three minutes elapsed in the opening quarter. Here is Richard Hamilton going out to Jordan, who's guarded right now by Iverson. And on the double team, the pass inside to Jahidi White, and he lays it in. So it's now, again, a three-point game. It's difficult in the NBA to beat a good, solid playoff team without a low post game. And Michael, we said, is the only one who is getting, oh, is this guy on fire? Iverson is feeling it. He has 10 points now, hitting his second three of the game and this crowd you know Iverson will be the first to tell you that he really hasn't played that well you brought out a good point this is really training camp for this ball club well you got four guys out there McKee and Iverson missed the first five games because of surgery and then you have Coleman and Harpering who are two new guys to this team short short on the jumper getting back on defense here is uh, McKee Good defense by Michael. Iverson slips, something to that wet floor in the corner after all. And Hugh Holland's watching it closely. Iverson going in and looking for the foul gets none. And here comes the Wizards. Hamilton pulls up for the jumper. Gets his own rebound. When you have a young team like Washington, you need the fast break points. You gotta get some easy baskets. And Richard Hamilton with his first basket and the Sixers lead is four. 76ers have won four of their six home games. The loss to Toronto on Sunday was the first time they had allowed 100 points in a game. And Yubi chronicled their outstanding defense down the line in our open. Here is Iverson. He's been hot and remains so. Iverson now, a two-point basket, now has 12 points on five for six from the field. So much for making an issue over his shooting 32%. Just going up a few points. That's yes. right. Well, we know he's one, he's right at the top of the league as one of the all-time great street shooters. And McKee intercepts Richard Hamilton's pass. Nice. Beats Coleman. And you're right, Hubie. The big guys are running the floor. Now, Coleman has been out on every single transition break, and that's impressive. And a timeout called by the Washington Wizards. The 76ers start out eight of nine from the field. And the transition basket by Coleman. And it's 18 to 10, Philadelphia. We'll be right back. This is off to a good start, leading 18 to 10. It's also been a good day for Philadelphia. Today, the NBA awarded them the injury exception for the season and career ending injury to Matt Geiger. With me, Billy King, the general manager. Now, uh, how does that affect your team and what are you working on? Well, you know, we'll have till December 24th to have a $4 million exception to either sign a player or make a trade. So, you know, right now, we'll just let the phone ring and we'll look to explore. We won't make any rash decisions, but, you know, we'll try to make our team better. You said sign a player. What players out there are available that could help a team? Well, I mean, there are a lot of players, veteran guys that aren't on squads, um, you know, Olden Polonese, uh, Otis Thorpe, the different guys like that. But I think if we were to use it, we'll probably end up using it in a trade matter. All right, thanks a lot. Let's go back to Dickie Hubie. Here is Hamilton driving in for the layup, and uh, Geiger had the degenerative arthritis at both knees, and so he retired. And uh, what area do you think that the Sixers would uh, need a bolster? Well, talking to Larry Brown, you'd like to get somebody possibly at the small forward position or a quality guy at power forward or center. But we all know that there are so limited amount of people out there at that four and five. But they're looking for a guy who can back up that small forward who can defend. Michael Jordan, who has taken about half of the uh, Wizards shots. Six point lead for the 76ers. Got off to an 0-5 start, the defending Eastern Conference champion. As you mentioned, a lot of the faces familiar from a year ago are gone. But Tumbo joined the team near midseason, and he traveled in trying to get it against Jahidi White inside. So two former Georgetown Hoyas tangling underneath. Yeah, he walked. There's no doubt about it. He shuffled his feet because he was banged in the hip area by White. Whitney. The point guard, and Jordan guarded by Harpering and Leitner 
hitting his second in a row. So Leitner coming in to the game, averaging uh, tw 10 points a game at 48%, as you mentioned. Played well against Boston the two games. Well, he, he'll shoot a high percentage because he's only going to take that open jump shot, and he gets it because of the double teaming of Michael Jordan. And uh, nearly a turnover and a personal foul is called against Chris Whitney with 5-12 left in the first. Now the coaching staff here in Philadelphia would like to see the perimeter people look inside more in their offensive sets, look for Coleman, look for Matumbo. In the early going, they're missing them in the early post-up pick. And what, you never like to do that because your big guys are your heart and soul of your defense. Here is a Matumbo with the hook shot and in and out, the rebound by Leitner. And you're right, and you've always preached this because they run, they do a lot of work. You've got to really reward them. Hey, they take care of the boards. You, that's why you're a plus 4.5. They shot block and they cover for you. Leitner driving in, lost control, and it is out of bounds off the bottom of the basket turned over to Philadelphia. I like what Shaq said last year, early in the year. If you want the big dog, to protect the front porch, then you must feed the big dog. Right on the money. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> right on the he money. the big dog. And the other point is that if you take the shot up before you know you let the, the uh, big man get underneath, you're not going to get second and third shots. The rebound, the offensive board. You always want to reward the big people when they run, and you want to reward them when they make a good move. They set a screen. Now they reverse and pin their man, and they're wide open. Get them the ball and let them work because then they'll give it to you at both ends of the floor. Chris Whitney picking up his second foul goes out of the game and Teron Lou, the former Laker, comes in and everyone of course remembers Lou and Iverson and the job that Teron Lou did on Allen Iverson briefly and in spurts in the NBA Finals. He's on him right now and Iverson steps back and nearly hits. This crowd into it. Harpring follows and Matumbo is tied up. So what has gotten this crowd into the game is the duel between Lou and Iverson. And Lou fell down trying to defend last year's MVP, Allen Iverson. Now to be fair to Lou, Lou has been on the injured list, has missed seven games. This is his first game back. Now who will win this jump? <laughs> Lou at six feet or Matumbo? At 7-2. Main thing right now, you're watching and you want to cut the tap off. And it's won by the 76ers and Iverson hitting the three. Allen Iverson now with 15 points and the 76ers lead now by seven. Well, that's always the best way, you know, to silence everyone and that is just to get the first big one right in the face of the defender. Leitner looking inside for a cutter, Jordan being defended well by Aaron McGee, who's an outstanding defender. And now the double team with Harpring coming over. Lou with the fake on Harpring. Short on the jumper, but Leitner cleans up for the hoop. Now with Michael being played by McKee, we should see Jordan go into the post area. That will force the double teaming, and it will open up the perimeter people. Wizards hanging in there, down by five, with nearly three and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. Jahidi White. Ball for the personal foul. And coming into the game for the Wizards is Hubert Davis. And, uh, and also checking in is Brendan Haywood, the rookie from North Carolina. We'll tell you more about those Wizards when we come back. Allen Iverson on fire has scored 15 of the Sixers, 21 thus far, Hubie. Well, you like his activity tonight. He's, he's in speed, super drive. The big factor is the fadeaway J. The perimeter game is going for him. He has the defender rocking back, and he's just shooting it in your face. Eight attempts, six field goals, three for three behind the arc. All right, right now, let's send it over to Craig. Well, speaking behind the arc, Allen Iverson has just gone into the record book. He is now the Philadelphia 76ers all-time leader in three-point field goals made. He breaks the previous record held by Hersey Hawkins. By the way, Dana Barros is third. And our own Charles Barkley, fourth for Young Wilson. Dick. All right. Thank you very much, Derek Coleman, as the ball slapped away. 
As we mentioned, uh, Brendan Haywood, the rookie from North Carolina, drafted by the Cavaliers, traded to Orlando, and now with Washington in the game, the seven-foot rookie from Carolina. Now they're looking for big things from him. Maybe he has good hands, he can score in the low post, and he can rebound. Last night was his first game. He missed the first 12 games. And he uh, defends against Matumbo, who's called for traveling for the second time. You're going to see Matumbo down in here work. You notice no double team down inside. Now that was an excellent shot block. Now at the University of North Carolina, he retired with not only the highest uh, field goal percentage, but also the shot blocking title. And uh, another Tar Heel, Michael Jordan sits down, replaced by Hubert Davis, who also attended the University of North Carolina. Davis, welcome addition. After being activated on Thanksgiving Day, Teron Liu, and Harpering, who, by the way, playing with a sprained right thumb. Coleman is uh, not 100% either. And the drive that time by Lou and Iverson all over him. And uh, that was Iverson. And Haywood driving in has it deflected and blocked by Matumbo. Fast-paced game right now. Harpering on the deck after missing the jump shot. And... Richard Hamilton finally hitting the jumper to bring the Wizards to within three. Now, this unit out on the floor, this is what they must do. It's got to be a quicker pace for Washington, force the break, and force Philadelphia to execute transition defense. And there's the pass down low to Matumbo. Now, Leitner is defending him. Yeah, they're going to call a hand check. On Leitner. And Leitner arguing now with Leon Wood. Well, you're not allowed to jam that forearm or the hand into the lower back. And you're going to see it right here. See, they're saying that he's keeping, see, if the arm is bent, everything is okay. But as he backs in, he straightens the arm out and he pushes up Leon Wood right on top of the ball. It's his interpretation. Uh, right now, Leitner is going to have to adjust. Matt Harpring leads the game for the 76ers, scoring two points, and Rajah Bell. In his second year from Florida International, he made a splash in the playoffs, replaces him. And uh, Leitner trying to defend against uh, an entry pass to Derek Coleman is called for his second in the last minute. Well, Leitner is not going to allow Coleman to get on the spot. And then what he want, wants to do is trying to play him on the top side and root him out. Now, naturally, he's going to come out of the game right now. Popeye Jones will come in and replace him. So, Doug Collins uh, with the... A learning curve with a lot of young players on this team and Michael Jordan. Leitner uh, and Collins discussing things. And Popeye Jones coming into the game. Jones, uh, the leading rebounder for the Washington Wizards, is playing very well thus far. Well, he gives it to you at both ends of the floor. He's a very intelligent player, and he plays hard every night. Now, when you think of how hot Iverson has been, you look up at the scoreboard, and you know, you're only four down. If he makes this, you're only going to be five down. This is terrific when you're on the road from a coaching standpoint. You're still right there. Wizards have lost five of their last six games on the road. And a tough stretch here because they've got Miami on the road on Friday. You can say, well, Miami is behind them in the standings, but there are no gimmies for a team like the Wizards. And then Orlando at home on Saturday. So a tough stretch. Four games in five nights, losing last night at Cleveland. Here is Hamilton, and he draws the foul, and Coleman picks up his first. Now, that was an excellent ball play. You know, going back to the schedule, Dick, you and I both know there'll be very few nights where Washington is a favorite going into a game this season, home or away. So Hamilton going the line on Coleman's foul, and uh, we're going to bring you up to date on what's coming up on the slate of games on Turner Sports. Next Tuesday at 8 p.m., the... 76ers who go on a western trip go against the Sacramento Kings and then on TNT Wednesday at 8 the Phoenix Suns against the New Jersey Nets as Jason Kidd and Stephon Marbury hook up they were traded for each other and then Thursday at a special 9 p.m. start Toronto at Milwaukee on TNT so three attractive games coming up next week on Turner Sports oh yes bad and pass Bad pass thrown by Derek Coleman, who says, my fall to Rajah Bell. Yeah, Rajah Bell changed direction, Dick, and he opened up in the corner, but Coleman had already committed himself. Washington has two major pluses. They're first in the league in foul shooting percentage at 81%, and they are only 
committing 13 turnovers a game. So they do take care of the basketball, so they do get a lot of shot attempts. The main thing is to shoot a higher percent. They don't have the team speed, and they need more of the offense, and the defense, too, is a problem, which is why a team is 3-10. and 10. Under two minutes remaining in the first, the Sixers lead the Wizards 23-20. to 20. Davis guarded by Rajah Bell. Trap goes out now to Teron Liu. Eight on the shot clock. Hamilton firing over Bell. And Popeye Jones coming out to keep it alive. Good hustle play by Jones. And Hubert Davis hitting a three. And it is now tied at 23. So coming back from an eight-point deficit are the Washington Wizards. Hubert Davis is on fire. He's right near 50% in threes. He missed a ton of games in the early part of the year because of bad knees and total of eight games. But right now, he is on fire. He's 14 for 29 in three-point shooting. And a guy, uh, according to Doug Collins, who, who knows how to play the game, a solid performer. The personal foul was on Teron Liu and Allen Iverson making good on the free throw to break the tie. Two free throws by Allen Iverson who has 17 first quarter points. Philadelphia by a pair. 76ers trying to go to eight and six on the year. They have won seven of their last eight. Here is the Lou in traffic, the one-handed looper, good, and we are tied again. Now tonight, Washington, they're running an off some beautiful half-court set. They're getting the guys open, and tonight they're making the shot. It's nice to see, because what that does with young people, then they continue that energy kick for you, and you're going to get probably a good 48 minutes out of them. Aaron McKee has not scored in this quarter. Here is Iverson unleashing another three, way off the mark. And Matumbo gets the rebound, and the foul is called. So Allen Iverson, who has hit three from downtown, and that personal foul is called against Popeye Jones. And so going to the line will be Dikembe Matumbo with uh, nearly a half a minute to go in the first. Smart foul that time by Popeye Jones. Do not, do not allow Matumbo to dunk. Matumbo's uh, free throw in... He makes the first. Well, you can vote right now for the starters in the NBA All-Star 2002. Just log on to NBA.com or America Online, AOL keyword NBA All-Star, and cast your ballot. One out of two for Matumbo and a lane violation. will give uh, Matumbo another opportunity. This, this is a call you wish that they'd be consistent about night in and night out, meaning the referees. We have guys in the lane, some nights they're already in there a step and a half, and it definitely disrupts the shooters. We've also had some guys who stand wide of the lane, and then they swing their hands up, which is also a no-no. You'd like to see them be consistent every night. You're in the lane, you're across the line, put the guy on the line again for another attempt. Derek Coleman leaves the game, replaced by Michael Ruffin who was assigned last Friday. He spent two years with the Chicago Bulls and a player. And uh, there the 76ers getting the ball on the turnover. Aaron McKee, very tenacious defender, has his shot blocked by Haywood. And uh, trying to control it is Ruffin. Loses it out of bounds. And the Wizards get it back, and they can play for the last shot of the quarter. Main thing right now is watch this full court pressure now. Get yourself set up and get a high percentage shot. 27 to 25, the Sixers lead, and the Wizards trying to at least tie it up before this quarter is history. Hubert Davis controlling in the backcourt. And with Lou and Hamilton, a smallish team, and time running down now. Teron Lou in traffic, double team, and does not get the shot off as the period ends, and you call it. They were in the backcourt too long. Billy Dallying. Absolutely. You try to get your move. You want to get your move at six or seven seconds on the clock, and Hubert Davis was tied up. So Allen Iverson with 17 of his team's 27 points. Richard Hamilton leads the Wizards with eight, and after one at the first Union Center in Philly, the Sixers lead the Wizards 27 to 25.
The Ben Franklin Bridge, which spans the Delaware River, as we welcome you back to the NBA on TNT. Dick Stockton, UB Brown, and Craig Sager. After one quarter, the 76ers lead the Wizards 27 to 25. There you see the uh, shooting. Both teams over 50%. Michael Jordan has scored four points on two for six shooting. What's interesting, UB, is that the Wizards outscored the Sixers nine to six with Michael on the bench. Well, yeah, like we say, you play in spurts. Uh, that's how the league is played. The main thing is, is can you be consistent over the 48 minutes? Aaron McKee with Allen Iverson, Michael Ruffin, Raja Bell in there and Dikemi Matumbo and uh, driving in and the ball lost to the Wizards. Iverson the lo looking for the foul, claiming that he was held. Yeah, he's, he, he's all hot, but they could have called an offensive foul. Trying to gamble for the steal, and guilty of the pushing foul is Iverson on Teron Blues. That is his first. Not, no doubt about it. Allen is very upset. He blew by Lou, but he ran right into the chest of that defender. Brendan Haywood with uh, Popeye Jones. Lou who gets the jumper with Davis and Hamilton. He can do that. He's outstanding at splitting a track and getting into the painted area. And he has that 8 to 10 foot game that you've got to play him. And of course, uh, a member of a world championship team. Here is Matumba working against the uh, Haywood and hits the floor and now traveling call. Yeah, Haywood is holding his own against the big guy Matumbo who travels for the third time. Well, you see, just watch how he hooks him right there. So they could have called an offensive foul. So rather than call an offensive foul on him, they call a travel. Matumbo cannot be upset with that. Now, he definitely walked on the previous one that he complained about, and there he should have been called for a foul. It had gone by, no look pass, and blocking nice is block. Matumbo. He blocks Haywood's shot, and here comes uh, Allen Iverson firing away and hitting. I don't even think Allen Iverson took a look at that basket before he let it go. And uh, an excellent call, Dick, because he was fading. He was definitely fading to his left. 19 for Iverson. Sixers by two. Hamilton off the front rim and fighting Iverson for the loose ball. I like the pace. I like what both teams are getting offensively. And it's really, it's been very exciting. Here is Aaron McKee, the double team, getting it to Ruffin, and Ruffin going in with the left-handed hook, but Tumbo with the offensive rebound, and the Wizards' Popeye Jones will be called for the loose ball foul. That will be Jones second as Michael Jordan comes back into the game. As we told you, uh, Jordan playing 31 minutes last night, the second fewest. And uh, checking in Kwame Brown, the other number one pick, in fact, the number one pick out of a Glenn Academy High School in Georgia. Missed four games with a sprained ankle. Well, he's only getting 18 minutes a game. Everybody is down on him, yeah, but you have to have patience. He's 19 years of age. He's learning terminology. He's learning how difficult it is to play four games in five knots against outstanding talent. Speedy Claxton, who was injured all of last year, the number one pick out of Hostra, but healthy this year, has come in the game. And uh, Allen Iverson is fouled by Lou, who picks up his second. So Harpering and Claxton join Derek Coleman, who has come in, as Ruffin and Iverson remain in there. Harpering will inbound. Speedy Claxton uh, had a torn ACL and missed all of last season. He is the backup point guard, and uh, Claxton beating uh, Matt Harpering with a fake on Jordan. Throws up the air ball. Ruffin. Ruffin does a good hustle job, allowing Iverson to hit from the corner. A two-point basket, and Iverson already with 21. Whenever you play Philadelphia, you must remember they are an outstanding standing offensive rebound and Ruffin is uh, Larry Brown says a sixer type of player and they love 6'8 240 bangs can defend three positions they like what he brings to the table and they're going to call Hubert Davis with the offensive foul trying to drive against Blackman so the 76ers leading by four 
right now with Claxton and Iverson on the floor at the same time. You've got to go down inside and post one of the two. Whoever has the advantage, you've got to go down in there and make it happen. Claxton in the lane and a loose ball foul called against the Wizards. And that will be against Kwame Brown. And uh, Kwame Brown, who is uh, 6'11", and they're talking about using him more and more at small forward. Well they, well, they feel that he has so much to learn in the post. He's really not a back-to-the-basket player. He is more comfortable facing. But you can see right now, since Ruffin has come into the game, three offensive rebounds already in a short period of time. Iverson has the ball taken away, and a good defensive play by Hubert Davis. Nearly three minutes have gone by in the second quarter. Wizards have lost nine of their last ten. But Collins says in some way we've got to find a way to get two wins out of the street. Lou changes hands and lays it in. Teron Lou activated tonight, has six off the bench. Yeah, that's out in the triangle offense. When the wingman hits the corner and he cuts to the baseline, he had a half a step on his man. Iverson with a good pass to Coleman, who's fouled inside. So a good ball movement by the Sixers, and Iverson gets it in to Coleman and a timeout now with the score, Sixers 31, Wizards 29. The ball to Jordan, and watch as the center comes up and sets a back screen. As Lou blows by, keep an eye on Iverson trailing the play. This is just a heads up move by Jordan, giving it at the right time, and then Lou can finish. Main thing with Iverson is you, you want to move without the ball because he turns his head so much, he is constantly thinking of stealing the passes. Teron Liu in his fourth year from the University of Nebraska. Allen Iverson has played the entire game thus far with 836 to go in the second. Has 21 of his team's 31 points. Richard Hamilton is the high score for the Wizards with eight, and yet they only trail right now by two. But Coleman is on the line. Chris Whitney has uh, replaced Teron Liu in the Washington lineup. And Derek Coleman, a, a native of Detroit, who was acquired from the Hornets. And a man of tremendous talent. Uh, cannot argue with this man's talent. Absolutely. Uh, rookie of the year, first year in the league with New Jersey. Averages 15 points, 10 rebounds. Shoots 80% on the line. And he's a quality passer. Really has a high IQ of how to play. We've seen exhibits of that tonight. 33 to 29, the Sixers lead. Davis looking for Michael Jordan, who's sandwiched. Fall away by Jordan. Tough shot at any age. And Michael Jordan now with six. Now that time they ran the triangle. They caught Michael as a flash forward. Now he could have passed off to the cutter. Instead, he wheels and shoots right in the face. And they're going to oh, call the blocking oh, foul. Oh. But I saw Coleman. Yeah. Push Haywood. Very good. Very good observation, Dick. Uh, that's just a rookie not getting a call. Watch this. There it is right there. See, that's an offensive foul. That's an offensive foul because he's got him behind the backboard. There's no place for him to go. But until Brendan Haywood gets in the league, they see what he can do for a period of time. Uh, maybe in about four or five years, we'll see him getting that call. <laughs> right. yeah. Or more. Two fouls on uh, Haywood. And I want to remind you that this Saturday, it's the NBA on NBC, the Orlando Magic against these Washington Wizards. That Saturday, December 1st, coverage begins at 6 p.m. Eastern. And you know the way uh, they think Haywood will develop? He will be getting a, a lot of the calls as time goes on. Here's some backcourt pressure. Yeah, they got, this is smart. After foul shots, uh, Philadelphia is famous for that. They love to come down the floor. After. Oh, you can't miss those. Knocked out of bounds and uh, fails a weak shot. Weak shot and by Brown. Doug Collins off yelling at uh, Kwame Brown. Uh, he is uh, concerned about the team's energy. That has been uh, a keynote for him. He understands that he's got uh, players, young players that need to develop. And that uh, could be a long season for a team that won 19 last year. Here is Speedy Claxton hitting a two-pointer. And the 76ers open up a five-point lead. Claxton can score, Dick. Now, when he was the starter, when Iverson and McKee were out, he averaged 17 points and shot 50%. Now, he's an excellent defender, and he can shoot well for you. But he's having a little difficult time adjusting coming off the bench. 
And Claxton trying to stay with uh, Hubert Davis. And Claxton fouls uh, Davis. Hubert Davis is not going to beat anyone off the dribble. Uh, we know that he's playing with bad knees. He's never been quick with the dribble. But what you can do is run him into the post or back screen for him and send him down into the post. Here's Davis from the outside. And Claxton will pick it up in the corner. Five point sixer lead. Biggest lead was Philadelphia by eight in the first quarter. And the Wizards came back to tie it up. Here's Derek Coleman out to Claxton. Touch pass to Harpering. And the rebound by Chris Whitney. Uh, you got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing and forcing. There you go. All right, to Kwame Brown. The no-look pass, and Whitney penetrating to the top of the key finds Kwame Brown for his first points of the game. Every time Washington pushes in the transition game, something good happens. Iverson getting by Whitney, and this time the rebound taken down by Kwame Brown. Very difficult to we remember from the likes of Kevin Garnett to come out of high school and be thrust into the NBA. Here is Jordan, defended by Harfrey. Repost to Jordan, the turnaround, and it spins away. Haywood knocks it out of bounds, and they say it's last touch by Ruffin, so the Wizards will get another possession. Aaron McKee will come in, and Allen Iverson will sit down for the first time. Iverson going out has been the offense for Philadelphia with 21 points on 8 for 13 shooting. And the lead is 3 and the ball knocked out of bounds. It is still Washington ball. When you're passing against Philadelphia on an inbound ball, you cannot assume that they're not going to be there. They love to play the passing lanes and they gamble for the steals. Michael Jordan has six points. Hamilton still the leading scorer with eight. And uh, the Philadelphia foul on the Claxton. I like Larry Brown's definition of Claxton. He loves the defense. He loves the savvy. He loves the fact that he can score. And you know that he's going to get better, especially since he sat out one year with that ACL operation. And he averaged 17 points and 55% shooting when he was a starter when Iverson was out and got a little bit timid when he came back, so he has to be more assertive. And there you see Brendan Haywood called for traveling. Well, remember now, this is his second game, and he missed a ton uh, because of his injury. Now, the main thing with him, as you can see, the pass caught him by surprise. He absolutely had no idea what to do with the ball. Halfway through the second quarter, Coleman out to Claxton. Ruffin fighting and Harpring. So that was again Michael Ruffin doing the little things that you don't see in the box score. That's the second offensive rebound where Ruffin just banged Kwame Brown, who had inside position, and Kwame Brown lost possession of the ball. I mean, he's got to understand he's got to get a little stronger in here, but he has to start rebounding with some authority. Harpring committing a second personal foul, but the Sixers maintain a five-point lead. We'll be right back. The first Union center, the Sixers lead the Wizards 38-33. Kwame Brown, the first overall pick, trying to make the jump, as many have lately, from high school to the NBA. And we have some comparisons, Hubie. Well, you can see the three that everyone wants to uh, compare him to, McGrady, Bryan, and Garnett. Well, how about... He's playing 18 minutes, McGrady 18, Kobe only 15, Kevin Garnett at 29 minutes, but Garnett's production came after the All-Star game. So you've got to give him a chance to learn where he's going to play. McGrady, Bryant, and Garnett all handle the ball much better than Kwame Brown. They have got to find a position for this guy. Uh, Doug is telling you and I before the game that they'd like to play him at small forward because he likes to play out on the perimeter. Now, will that be his position for the future? Who knows? Who knows how that body will change since he's only 19 years of age? But we can see tonight at the power forward position, Ruffin is smacking him around and has picked up four offensive rebounds here, and that's the difference in this game right now. Well, both teams are now in the penalty, Hugh, with the... Uh, Aaron McKee picking up the foul. Michael Jordan on the free throw line. Richard Hamilton uh, returning to the Wizards lineup, and he still is the leading scorer for the Wizards with eight points. Could be tied for that uh, 
mini honor if Jordan makes it, and he does. So Michael Jordan, who did not go to the free throw line last night in the loss to the Cavaliers, makes his first trip to the strike, and the lead is down to three for Philadelphia. Eric Coleman, defended by Brendan Haywood. They go out to Claxton, penetrating and shooting over Whitney, and the rebound taken down by Jordan. Harpering trying to stay with Jordan. Very pesky defender is Harpering, and Jordan goes right through everybody. A picture move by Michael Jordan, who has been. Well, the hesitation dribble definitely suckered Harpering into stopping, and then Michael just put on the afterburner. So the lead now won. So the Wizards hanging in there against the defending Eastern Conference champions whom they've already defeated earlier this year. Derek Coleman with the jumper. He has nine. Well, you must play him out there. Derek Coleman can make the three. He's a great 18 to 20 foot jump shooter. And then he can take you off the dribble. And the Wizards making a run here with Allen Iverson on the bench for the 76ers. Here's Kwame Brown shooting over Ruffin, and Ruffin is there. So Ruffin certainly making his presence felt here. Harpring going around Jordan, and the ball is knocked out of bounds, last touched by the Wizards. He bring Christian Leitner back into the game. Keep an eye on Michael now as he gets into the middle of the floor. See, right here, he gives you a little hesitation, right? And then he makes the big move, stepping right on through. And Jordan with 10 points. Allen Iverson and Dikembe Mutombo return to the game for the 76ers. Ruffin goes out. Harper misses the short jumper. And a chance for the Wizards. They're trailing by three. And go driving in is Jordan, held by Coleman, so he doesn't get hurt. Well, that's what you'd like to see Michael do. At the beginning of the game, we put up the graphic, career versus this year. Michael's getting to the line six times a game. Throughout his career, it was always nine. At playoff time, he would always get to the line 10 or more chances. But right now, he's settling more for the jump shots. You'd like to see him explode. Bowman, second foul. Jordan makes the first. Watch the drama of figure skating on TNT as the world's greatest ice rivalries compete. Don't miss the Masters of Figure Skating tomorrow at 9 Eastern and Pacific, only on TNT. The reason why we bring up the foul shot attempts, Michael, 84% for his career. This year, 84%. It's an easy way for him to pick up more points. Michael Jordan with 12 points, leading the Wizards. Iverson, who comes back after several minutes on the bench with 21, and it's a one-point lead for the 76ers with under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Iverson defended by Teron Liu. To clear out a reprise of last year's NBA Finals, and Iverson beats into the basket for his 23rd point. Leitner did not want to pick up another foul. He didn't even make an attempt to interfere with that shot. And the Teron Liu. Oh, Jordan's on got the Iverson on. <laughs> and Coleman is out guarding Liu. That's the mismatch. Liu has to find Jordan. And Jordan with the turnaround. And the rebound by Derek Coleman. And here comes Iverson. Iverson with the long-range shot does not hit anything. And Popeye Jones picking up the loose ball for the Wizards. They can narrow the gap again. And now Richard Hamilton with 3.10 on the clock in the first half calls a Washington timeout. Sixers 42, Wizards hanging in there, 39. As the Sixers normally have, Allen Iverson an attraction tonight. And it's the visitor, Michael Jordan, coming to town for the first time. And uh, Iverson with the 23. Jordan has 12 to lead their respective teams in a very competitive uh, first half. Well, I think that as the year goes on, Philadelphia will develop into a monster, especially if they make a solid pickup with that $4 million exception. This is going to be a very tough team to play at playoff time in the Eastern Conference. Washington, Dick, we're seeing them run some beautiful stuff. They're shooting a nice percentage tonight. And that's off Jordan's foot. Main thing right now for them is can they continue to improve defensively in this game tonight and bring the Philadelphia shooting percentage down? Stop giving second shot at them. There's uh, Coleman backing in, and I think he lost it off his foot out of bounds. 
So they're playing footsie out there. First Jordan and then Derek Coleman. And uh, the Wizards trailing by three with uh, under three minutes to go. But I'll tell you what, from what we've seen of Haywood and Brown, it looks like they've got something there. Oh, I, I, raw. De definitely. And there's no doubt about it that Haywood has, re has really got outstanding talent because he can catch. The main thing is, is can he score? Because the shot blocking, rebounding, and catching the ball will be fine. But now he's got to get confidence to develop a low post game. Michael Jordan's jumper, 14 for Jordan. 10 here in the second quarter, and again, it's a one-point lead for the 76ers. Here's Iverson, and Iverson coming up, and it's now, again, a three-point game, so it's fluctuated between one and three, and a 25-point effort in the first half for Iverson. What a half for him. That was so hard to do, Dick. He stopped on the dime, made it look easy as the defender went right past him. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Jordan with a fake over Harpering and a foul. Harpering was on Jordan. And for Matt, that'll be his second. Well, he's definitely challenging Michael. He's forcing Michael to work extremely hard. You're going to see. He's not getting beat off the dribble. He's forcing Michael into a lot of spin stuff. But now that was a, a great old-time move, by vintage move by Jordan on that fadeaway. And if the shot doesn't go, it's amazing how many times he gets fouled. Well, coming up on the AT&T Halftime Report, Ernie Johnson, Kenny Smith, and Charles Barkley are in the studio to bring you all of tonight's action on the AT&T Halftime Report. Gordon had 18 points last night, and he has now scored his the last 10 Wizards points to once again, sounds like a broken record, bring them to it in one. Under two minutes to go in the half. Edie Claxton with Iverson. Ruffin is back in the game. He did a terrific job off the bench earlier. Hamilton might have gotten a piece of it on one end, but Coleman rebounds the miss. Another offensive rebounding score. And the reason is because three guys went over to pick up Iverson. That opened up Coleman on the opposite side of the rim. So the Sixers with seven offensive rebounds in this first half. And here's Jordan backing in against Aaron McKee and hits the jumper, a line drive laser for Michael Jordan, who has 18. He's got the feel right now. And also, he's being played now by Aaron McKee, where he has at least a couple of inches on McKee. 105 remaining in the first half, and Iverson double teamed and held. No basket underneath. And Iverson is uh, held, and the foul is called against Teron Lou. That's three on Lou. And of course, the crowd certainly was up for that matchup Lou against Iverson. And Allen will shoot two. One year ago, Iverson averaged 10 foul shot attempts a game, third in the league behind Stackhouse and Shaq. Shaq being at 12.5 a game. Now, Looks kind of easy to guard him. Well, just stay in front of him and keep him in a jump shooting game until you get out there, and then all of a sudden he starts off on fire with all of the perimeter game. Now as you creep up on him, the great speed, the explosion off the dribble, and then the ball handling ability to change directions on a dime. Last year's MVP and the leading score at 31 points a game. It's 48 to 45, Hubert Davis. Checking in for Teron Liu with under a minute remaining in the first half. Ten on the shot clock for Washington. Jordan picks up the bobble and hits the shot. No matter, Michael Jordan now with 20 points, 16 here in the second quarter, keeping the Wizards virtually even with Philadelphia. And Iverson defended by Popeye Jones and Hamilton, and it's last touched by the Wizards. So... Michael Jordan scoring the last 14. You're going to see the double screen right there for Michael Jordan. And they've been running that at least four times for him during the half. He can go on the top of the circle or catch down the base. Speedy Claxton, and it's 50 to 47. It's been one or three. The Sixers uh, lead, slim as it is. And finally, a, a timeout, 20 second timeout. Ball by the Wizards. Michael Jordan, who has scored the last 14 Wizards points, they trail by three. Michael Jordan, uh, 
last night, unaccustomed as he is, lashing out at his team, saying, we stink. I mean, he was obviously frustrated. I think that he expected more. And let's face it, Michael Jordan never really needed patience in the past. We'd like to give, show you this play that they've been running time and time again. Michael Jordan down here, and you're going to see the double screen. They bring Michael up on the top. Now in this one, he receives the pass and he scores. But other times tonight, he's come back down and posted, and they get him the ball right in there. So they run it both ways. Now in this one, you're going to see he does not make a clean catch, but beautiful. It was uh, the, the screens were perfect. He was wide open, and they can continue to run that until Philadelphia shows you that they can stop it. Michael Jordan has taken two layups, is connected on one. The rest have been jump shots for his total of 20 in the first half. Already two more than he scored last night. Eight on the shot clock. Differential of about three or four seconds. Jordan, short, picked up by Hamilton, batted away by Coleman. And now the 76ers with seconds remaining in the first half. Iverson fires a three and misses at the horn. Allen Iverson with 20. Seven points in the first half leading the Philadelphia 76ers, but Michael Jordan countering with 20 to keep the Wizards within three as we send it out to Craig Sager. But Eric, you got 11 points, you're up by three, but I don't think you're happy with where you guys are playing, are you? No, I think we can play a little bit better on defense. Uh, I think we take, let Mike take uh, too many shots. Another thing is uh, the second half that we have to concentrate more on. Uh, once we get the ball, just get out on the break and run a little bit more. With the inexperience they have in their front line with Hayward and Brown, you've only taken three shots, why? Well, Allen's hot right now. I mean, I was told a long time ago, if a guy has a hot hand, you keep going to him until the wheel runs dry. So he's still on fire. We're going to keep going to him. All right, thanks, Lance. Back to Dick Huey. All right, thank you very much, Craig. So the Sixers lead seesawed between one and three points the last five and a half minutes of the quarter. The lead is three as we send it now to Ernie Johnson and the gang at our studios in Atlanta. In the game, the Philadelphia 76ers lead the Washington Wizards 50 to 47. We've been fortunate to be able to uh, listen in to the respective huddles of the two coaches, Doug Collins and Larry Brown. And right now, let's see what we've got. Guys, good tempo, good ball movement, okay? Good ball movement, all right? And every time they've come out of a timeout, they've run a pick and roll and a dive or a flare. So be aware. Guys, stay on the boards, turn over, let's keep them to a minimum, get ourselves back. Tempo is going to be real vital, okay? Let's not give them any easy scores. All right, so here we are at halftime, and the Wizards are doing more, Hubie, than uh, holding their own, and Michael Jordan getting hot scoring the last 14 Washington points of the half. Well, Michael's on fire, but they're winning the battle of the, point, the paint, believe it or not, 20 to 12. What they have to cut down, they've lost 11 second chance points now at the other end philly is on fire because of iverson but there are three guys on his team coleman matumbo and mckee who are averaging between 12 and 18 points between them they've only had six shot attempts you know this town has had a lot of shootouts uh, in basketball down through the years sam jones and hal greer a long time ago larry bird and julius irving tonight it's jordan and iverson and there they are uh, Iverson with 27 points, Jordan with 20, and uh, neither one of them have missed from the free throw line as we send it out to Craig Sager. Well, last night Washington lost to Cleveland by 19. Doug Collins, the coach, said the team was lifeless. Michael Jordan simply said, we stink. But tonight, according to Doug Collins, there's a different mood in the locker room. He said last night they went on the floor, just messed around. But tonight they were focused and determined. One of the big reasons, Allen Iverson, when they beat Philadelphia early in the year, he was not playing. He thought maybe that fired him up. But also, don't forget Tyron Lu and also Brendan Haywood. Those two came into the game, gave him a big lift because they were down by eight, and then they brought him back. He said the big difference could be here in the third quarter, though. They can't let Philadelphia take the lead early, and they can't turn the ball over. All right, Craig, and you know, uh, we talk about the two big scorers, but they're always those uh, the supporting players. Michael Ruffin, for example, and the job he did, one of the supporters of both teams in the first half. Iverson with uh, McKee, Matumbo, Harpering, and Coleman for Philadelphia. And uh, here is Matt Harpering, gets Jahidi White in the air, and it's tipped in Matumbo. You like to see that. You have a mismatch. No way can Aaron, 
Aaron McKee not go down inside and punish you when you have that difference in a mismatch. Then, when you double team, it opens up the offensive rebound. Richard Hamilton and Christian Leighton, Chris Whitney, Michael Jordan, and Jahidi White for the Wizards. Leighton misses the first Washington shot of the second half. Aaron McKee, who will uh, revert to a role player. He was the sixth man of the year last year in the NBA when Eric Snow comes back. And there is Iverson driving in as his shot blocked inside, and it was blocked by Michael Jordan. Here is Leitner, three on one, and Great steal. McKee steals the ball. The Wizards had a three on one opportunity, and McKee driving to the basket, gets it in his foul. Want to talk about a reversal of fortune. Well, we say it all the time. When you miss an opportunity at one end, you miss a layup, a dunk, or a quick turnover like that, in the NBA, they score within four seconds. And this is just a great anticipation here, and then a strong move by McKee. At the one end, it was a three-on-one. He intercepts the pass, and at this end, he has a chance now for a three-point play. Went to the basket strong. McKee's first points of the game, but he has uh, done a terrific job defensively with three steals. He has had five rebounds and five assists. One of the uh, linchpins of this Philadelphia ball club that reached the finals last year. Hamilton knocking into a defender, Matumbo comes down and now to Iverson, has the ball knocked away from him by Chris Whitney. Jordan gets it back to Whitney, who's wide open and hits. Interesting. On the break, when Washington gets out and pushes, they've been very successful. And then if they don't get it in the initial surge, they're getting it in the secondary break phase of it. 55 to 49, the Sixers lead. A little more than a minute and a half of the last tier of the third. And here is McKee guarded by Hamilton. McKee looking for the touch here in the third quarter. Misses the short turnaround jumper. It's in the hands of Michael Jordan. Jordan, crossover, and Matumbo the rebound. He has no problem getting his shots off in the majority of times, and that's why we say him. He's averaging 25 shot attempts a game. Uh, people are saying, well, he's getting some block. Well, in the closing three to four minutes, some nights he does get a shot blocked. And we say that is because of the tendonitis in the knee, which you can see the wrap on. And naturally, the elevation is not as high as it used to be. Harpering fouled by Jahidi White. And we'll go to the line. Good pickup for the Sixers getting Matt Harpering from Cleveland after two years in Orlando. Well, he's such a good score. He has a nose for the ball. I want to remind you, the upcoming games coming up on Turner Sports next Tuesday on Superstation TBS, the Sixers against the Sacramento Kings at 8 p.m. and then TNT on Wednesday at 8 with the Phoenix Suns traveling east to go against the New Jersey Nets who lead the Eastern Conference's Atlantic Division at 10 and 5. They've been a surprise team. And then on Thursday, TNT, it'll be the Raptors and the Bucks on a special 9 p.m. start. Loose ball and Hamilton. Picks it up for the Wizards. Seven point Philadelphia lead. Largest lead either team had was the Sixers leading by eight in the first quarter. Ever since then, it's been uh, within a handful. Here's Leitner with a wild shot, but White is there to clean up. Now that's a field goal for the centers at Washington. And you're just saying, well, what's the big deal? Well, between the centers, that is their second field goal. Okay. <laughs> so it is a big deal. Yes, it is. Iverson loses the ball. And here come the Gotta get a Wizards. Here. here is Whitney. He's got Hamilton on the wing. Nice. Fakes it. And it's batted up and by Coleman. Derek Coleman gets the defensive play. Here is Iverson. This time trying to find Harpering inside. And there is a foul against the Wizards. Excellent and defensive play by Coleman. You're going to see right at the right of your screen. Uh, he was running down on that break. Two on one advantage. Coleman comes right into the picture and has an opportunity for a shot block. That last foul was called against Jahidi White, his third. So Coleman, not everything he does is uh, in the box score with good passing earlier, has 11 points in the game. You know, already this year, Dick, averaging 18 a game, right at nine rebounds. He's doing what they want, he's getting in better shape. Matt Harpring from the corner. Matt Harpring with seven points. And the Sixers lead 58 to 51, trying to make it eight out of their last nine. Well, you've got to guard this front line. 
There's no doubt about it. Harper can score, plus he gets a lot of garbage in getting to the glass and running without the bar. And then the Tumbo and Coleman must pay attention. Michael Jordan in the air gets fouled by Matt Harpering. That'll be his third foul and will send MJ to the free throw line. Keep an eye on Harpering there on that curl. You're going to see him now. He's going to, now as he comes out on this side, Doug Collins and the coaching staff are all upset. They figured that he pushed off with that forearm. That's how he shed Jordan. Jordan misses the free throw after connecting on his first six. He's got another one here. Jordan played 19 minutes in the first half. And remember that Doug Collins wants to keep his minutes down to 32 to 34. He had been over 40 minutes in the previous five games before the game against Cleveland. Not tonight. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's already been to the line eight times yeah. now. He's in a nice flow. Not tonight getting the 30 minutes. He'll yeah, yeah, yeah. be up to 40. Oh, wide open. Coleman and Whitney getting the long rebound. Here's Michael Jordan. Gets by Iverson. And the foul called against the Wizards. Jordan wanted that jumper. It was open. And instead, White picking up his fourth. Washington must be careful. You're pushing the ball. You're getting some nice, good looks at the basket. What you need is a little luck. You got to get on a little run here right now. Make these open shots. Because by pushing the ball, you definitely have had a, an advantage every time. Whether it's two on one, even three on two, four on three. White goes to the bench with four fouls and replaced by Brendan Haywood, who played 11 minutes and did not score in the first half. Double team and an errant nice. play by McKee, and Hamilton will get it easy stuff. So Richard Hamilton now with 10 points. He had a long drought at eight in the first quarter. And the Wizards creeping closer down by four. Well, the Wizards defense that last play perfectly. They did a great job on their rotation. Here's Iverson in traffic, beating Matumbo, loses the ball, picked up by Coleman, and he can't convert. Michael Jordan looking down court, finally finds Hamilton, and here is Whitney, some three-point shooter who gets the chance. Jordan open. And he misses. So Michael Jordan now is 0 for 3 here in the third quarter. He had 20 in the first half. Oh, it's a big mismatch. You got to get there quick. McKee for 3. And there is Matumbo fighting for the loose ball and stays in bounds, only to see his pass intercepted by Jordan. And here is Hamilton missing the layup at the other end. Opportunities galore going by the boards for both teams. Here is Iverson. And good hustle by Brendan Haywood to get the ball away from Matumbo. I see he's a big presence, Nick. He's over seven foot. You know, and he has about 250 pounds on him, legit. Jordan driving against Harpering. He got a step on Matt Harpering. And Michael Jordan with his first basket of the third quarter, now with 23. What I like about his game tonight, meaning Michael, is that he's attacking the rim. And he's going to it. He's already been on the line eight times. That opportunity right there. Harpering did not want to pick up a foul. The three missed by Iverson, and now the Wizards looking to tie it up. Here is Hamilton driving in and does. No. And so the Washington Wizards, who are down by seven, have tied up Larry Brown's club at 58-58, and nearly six minutes remaining in the third. That's why he keeps saying, keep pushing, because it's, there's no doubt about it, Philly's transition defense is not they're not working at their game tonight. And normally that's their trademark. That's right. Here is Iverson forcing the shot over Whitney and the rebound right, by pushing. Hamilton. The Wizards looking to take the lead. And here is Hamilton is. hitting the jumper. So the Washington Wizards taking their first lead since early in the game at 6-4 to four, have forced Larry Brown to call a timeout. A 9 to nothing run by the Wizards capped by this Richard Hamilton basket, Sixers trail, 760 to 58. And now it's time for our weekly feature. Hey, Hubie, we're a fan. Ask my partner, Hubie Brown, an intelligent basketball question. Here it is. <laughs> hey, Hubie! Yo, Hubie, can the Sixers continue to win with Allen Iverson shooting 27 times a game? Well, I'll tell you, that's a great question. When you say 27 times a game, this is a team that only gets 74 shots a night. 
so that you're talking over a third of the shots. That's why I brought out the point at halftime. At halftime, Coleman, Matumbo, and McKee, three guys who average over 12 points a game, only had six shot attempts. So right now, when you talk about the team itself, he's out there with 10 out of 21. He's got to shoot a high percentage. The players will accept it if he shoots a high percentage, but not if he continues at 32% for the year. That question asked by uh, Pat Croce, who was practicing for his uh, work on the pregame show on NBC's uh, telecast, the former owner of the 76ers, now asking Huey Brown, and I'm glad I said intelligent question. Dick, you know, when you look at it, just think a second. A year ago, Lynch and Hill really didn't care that much about the offensive end of the floor. But now when you add a Derek Coleman and a Harpering along with your other guys, you have more cannons here now to shoot a high percentage. And that's where you think as the season goes on and they start to get comfortable with one another since a lot of them were joined the club at the end of camp, they're going to be a force when the playoffs come instead of having to play a perfect defensive game. Absolutely. And you know right now that's the main concern for Larry Brown. That's why he's trying to emphasize all week long, that's all you read in the papers here, Larry trying to get the perimeter people to appreciate the post-up guys on the move, not only in the offense, but in the transition game, meaning Coleman and Matamba. Will you please get the ball inside? Did you recognize Pat Croce when he asked that question? <laughs> you were talking to him before the game. It hasn't been that long, but... Haywood picking up his third foul and the Matumbo missing the first free throw. The 76ers have missed their last seven shots, so they've gotten cold on the offensive end, and the Wizards leading now by still by two as Matumbo misses both. Chris Whitney with Michael Jordan, Brendan Haywood, Richard Hamilton, and Christian Leitner, and that was a turnover. I, I'm like Chris Whitney right yeah, now. I, I you that. know, that was definitely hit. Uh, hit the hand of Chris Whitney. Who did it? Allen Iverson. Uh, he smacked it, and the ball went right out of bounds. Here's the facts, ma'am. 9 nothing run in the last three and a half minutes. Sixers have missed seven straight. Thus, the Wizards lead with 4.35 to go in the third. Derek Coleman over Leitner. And the rebound taken down by Brendan Haywood. Coleman and Matumbo in the low post have not been double teamed yet. They're playing them straight up. And like Charles Barkley brought out at halftime on the halftime show, you've got to go down in and punish these guys because they can't defend them. Jordan inside. Nice. Hamilton does not get the basket. It rolled off. Coleman clearing it. Great pass. Michael Jordan with the heartbreak but smartly made the pass inside. But now with four minutes to go in the third, Sixers looking to tie the game. Harpring driving against Jordan. Tough basket by Matt Harpring. Well, Harpring can score. We know in his first year in Orlando in that short season 50 games, he was on the first team all rookie team. Tied at 60. And Jordan very nearly lost his footing, recovers and hits the basket. 25 for Michael Jordan. And it's a 62-60 game. He did the harpering right there, what he did to Russell in that famous shot against Utah in the playoffs. He gave him the forearm that knocked him off stride. And Jordan's going to be called for the pushing foul on harpering. Yep, that will be his first. Keep an eye on Michael now as he moves to his right. Now watch the bump. There it is, right there. There's your push. Harpering goes back with it. You think you're going to get the call? You're not going to get the call. So Harpering uh, on the free throw line with 325 remaining as the uh, Wizards are in the penalty. The Sixers have committed only one team foul. Harpering playing with a sprained thumb and way off the mark on that attempt. Well, uh, you say, well, is he a bad foul shooter? No. You know, in his three years in the league, he's a 78% foul shooter, but he is playing with a, a damaged thumb. One out of two for Matt Harpring, bringing the Sixers to within one. So the Philadelphia 76ers have been on a roll lately, winning seven out of eight, getting a tremendous resistance tonight by the Wizards who come out well after being embarrassed at Cleveland last night by 19. Hamilton finds Leitner, up fake on Coleman. Here is Hamilton with the jumper. 
Hamill has missed a couple good chances. Yeah, they've had some really nice opportunities. High percentage shot areas. The ball just has not gone down. And Derek Coleman working his way in has it knocked away. Michael Jordan coming in for the steal on the double team, his third of the game. Jordan gives it up to Whitney, and he has an errant shot too low on the line drive at there. Yeah, at the other end, that was a beautiful strip by Leitner. Jordan has a nose for the ball tonight. He's been doing an excellent job on the board because Harpering is down in that painted area, so Michael has been a key rebounder tonight. Here's Iverson. Does yet to hit a basket nice. here, and the ball's knocked away, and Hamilton's going to get another stuff. Hamilton with 16 points, and a technical foul has been called against Chris Whitney of the Wizards. Well, see, you hate to see that happen. Doug Collins is up right now. He's He's asking Whitney why. Why do you get a technical foul? We just scored on a breakaway layup. You wonder if he's worrying, still concerned about that ball that was turned over, that was touched by Iverson. Oh, you never know. You hope not. That happened a while back. Iverson has the basketball right here, and Jordan is going to force him into a trap by Whitney. But keep an eye on Whitney. You'll see Hamilton take off and make the layup. But just keep an eye on him here now. It had to be right there because as they go down, now keep an eye on Whitney. You're going to see dunk the ball right there. Whitney is yelling right there at the referee. And that could either be off of that play or the play before when he launched up that jump shot, he thought he was hit on the shot. Well, Craig Sager has uh, the answer. Craig. Well, it's not only that shot, but it's also earlier when the ball was slapped out of his hand by Allen Iverson. He started yes. complaining to the officials and never stopped complaining. They gave him a chance to calm down when he did to Scott Walsh, and I finally had to give him a technical, and Doug Collins also gave an earful on the bench. All right, Craig, Michael Jordan on the bench now, getting a breather, Speedy Claxton from the outside. Hubert Davis into the game, gets the rebound. That the free throw on the technical was made by Allen Iverson. His first point of the second half, he's turned it over four times and has yet to hit a field goal. He's looking to get on track. Leitner out to Hamilton, hitting a three. So Hamilton, who had grown cold lately, now has 19 points. And the Wizards lead by five. He's got 11 here in the third. When Michael Jordan and Leighton are out on the floor, if you get open, they'll get you to basketball. So Hamilton with the Lou, Davis, Haywood, and Leighton. And Matumbo misses the windmill hook shot. And uh, all of a sudden, the Wizards have uh, taken over the momentum of this game here with 119 to go in the third. And what you like, Nick, is that they are only getting, meaning Philadelphia, one shot attempt. And Haywood getting the basket and the foul. So Brendan Haywood and this crowd here is stunned. The Washington Wizards, who already own a win over the Sixers, but that was without Iverson in the Philly lineup. Well, you like this group because when they came in in the second quarter, they outscored the bench 11 to 4 of Philadelphia. Now here they are again. They're playing spirited. And if you get the ball to Leitner, anytime you make your movement, somebody's open, he'll put the ball on the money. Three point play by Brendan Haywood. And it was last touched by the Wizards. So the Washington Wizards, who are 3 and 10 on the year, have outscored the Sixers 23 to 12 here in this third quarter to now take an eight-point lead. They've already lost three seconds in the back court here now, so they got to get it up and over quick. In five. They've got to get it in up five there. seconds, and they will. The key. That was a silly yeah. foul. And uh, Coleman. That was a silly foul by Lee. Oh, over the back of Coleman. That, that was uh, completely you know, an unnecessary foul. Third on Leitner and Coleman to the line. Well, this Friday, watch the drama of NASCAR on TNT at the 2001 Winston Cup Series Award Ceremony from New York City. Winston Cup champion Jeff Gordon will be crowned, along with a special performance from Garth Brooks, who will perform a tribute to the late Dale Earnhardt. That's Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on TNT. Leitner will uh, go out of the game and replaced by Popeye Jones for the Wizards. There is uh, Jones, who tonight has not scored. Leitner with six in the game. 
And into the game for the 76ers is Michael Ruffin, who has uh, played a, a good game as far as defense, rebounding, and all sheer hustle. Just joining the club, signed Friday after playing two years in Chicago. So it's 70 to 64, six point game. Coleman now with 13. Teron Luke defended by Speedy Claxton. Under a minute to go in the third. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Hamilton against the bigger Coleman. In and out, spins away. Here's Iverson who does not have a field goal here in the third quarter, and now he does. His first brings the Sixers to within four. Well, it's the first time in the quarter that he's really attacked the rim. Half a minute to go in the third. Teron Lou, no foul. Hamilton hitting the jumper. So Derek Coleman, uh, looking over, wanted a foul, a charging foul, or I should say an offensive foul, and did not get it. There's the uh, clock remaining in the uh, third quarter. The shot clock and the game clock virtually the same. Claxton. And Davis got a piece of it from behind. Final second. Lou gets it off and oh, it doesn't go. It would have counted had it gone. But Rip Hamilton with 13 points here in the third quarter to spark the Washington Wizards, who are down by three at the half, to a 72 to 66 lead as we enter the fourth quarter. <laughs> and Michael Jordan have lived up to their billing. They have not disappointed, and 55 points between them. 72 to 66 as we start the fourth quarter. Teron Liu to Davis for three. Hubert Davis hitting a three, and the uh, Wizards now lead by nine, and that is the biggest lead either team has enjoyed tonight. Hubert Davis is now 15 for 30 in threes, 50%. And Tyrone Liu gets him open because he always is blowing by his man. Iverson, who has 30 points, missed shot inside Coleman. A couple of fakes and a basket. Good hustle and second effort by Derek Coleman. Now that's the only area that Washington is not doing a good job. That was their 15 point scored on second shot attempt by Philadelphia. Yeah, the Wizards are certainly not lifeless and uninspired tonight. No, they're, they're playing not. with energy. They didn't last night. Here is Davis trying to feed it inside, and the foul is called, and a technical oh, and foul a on top of that. Allen Iverson. Let's see, they'll call the foul on Ruffin. And then the technical foul called on Iverson. So Richard Hamilton will go to the line to shoot the technical. Well, as the player blew by Iverson, then naturally the rotating defense had to come to his rescue. You've got to give a lot of credit here. Now just watch, here's your ball fake, there's your move, just blew right by him, and right there you thought from this angle that Ruffin had a clean block. But the referee was only three feet away, and he must have heard the hit. Hamilton now with 22 points. Jordan leading the Wizards with 25. Teron Liu defended by Speedy Claxton, leaves it open for Popeye Jones, who oh, hits oh, from the oh, corner. Oh. How valuable has he been off the bench? Today? Oh, you just got to love it, because Tyrone Liu has made so much happen. Bench points right now. How about 16 to 4 in favor of Washington? And they got the big edge, as you pointed out, in the paint, two to one edge. Well, in the paint, it's hard to believe, but the Wizards have outscored the Sixers 36 to 18 in the paint. Turnover gives the ball back to the Wizards. So Washington playing a smart game tonight. They're making your shots. When you make your shots stick, makes everything else so much easier for you. And the first double-digit uh, margin in the game, 10 points, and they're gonna call Claxton for holding on Teron Liu. And this crowd now befuddled 
as the 76ers are being outplayed by the Washington Wizards for Claxton, his third. Right now, you're Larry Brown and your staff. You're, you're, you're just so upset with your defense because Tyrone Lue is past his man every single possession. And he's breaking down the interior defense, making good possessions, and they're making the shots. Six assists for Lou, but they're going to uh, turn it over now. They're moving screen. And that'll be on Haywood. That'll be his uh, fourth personal foul. So the Sixers get it early here in the fourth quarter. It's a 10-point lead for the Wizards as uh, they try to uh, win their fourth game in 14 starts this year. Here is Speedy Claxton. Raja Bell into the game, and he delivers with a jump shot from the corner. You can see that the defense from Washington now double teaming Iverson. Steal oh, by Claxton. Good. Yep. And Lou and Iverson follows. So Speedy very well living up to his name, forcing the turnover. And now the Wizards call a smart timeout. Good call. Good call by Doug Collins and Dick Stockton. I, I don't get paid for making those calls. He Cut does. the run down. Get your guys together. Regroup. Talk this over. Six-point game. A good one tonight, Philly. It's 10, and the crowd has come alive. And uh, earlier today, Allen Iverson was signed to a lifetime contract with Reebok, who presented him with a glittering watch commemorating his most valuable player award last season. NBA MVP 2001. So he's set for a while, wouldn't you say? Well, his sneaker during the fiscal year that just passed was the highest selling sneaker in all of the business. Well, that's uh, kind of interesting. Michael Jordan back into the game for the Wizards. He has scored 25 tonight. He is guarded by Rajah Bell with eight on the shot clock. And there's Jordan. And now it's a eight-point game in favor of Washington with the 27 now for Michael. They need Michael to play big from now right down the wire. They need his leadership under the pressure. And these are the kind of games that he hoped he would be in more than he has been. Games in which the Wizards are close or ahead down the stretch. But Iverson hits the two. Iverson with 34 now. We'd love to see a duel from now to the end. <laughs> We've had it so far tonight, Hubie, and why not finish off this way? A little more than three minutes gone by here in the fourth. Bell defending against Jordan. Jordan can't get the shot off, but Lou can. And the tip by Haywood attempt. Loose ball, and Popeye Jones misses a hook shot. Yeah, Popeye's upset. He felt that he should have had that one. And here is Iverson. And Claxton leaves it out for Coleman. Good ball movement, and Iverson steps behind the line for a three. And Hamilton getting the long rebound. Six-point Washington lead, under eight and a half to go in the fourth. Washington cannot become conservative here, Jim. They have got to continue to push the ball, because that's how they got the lead. Jordan looking for the cutter, none there. His turnaround, and the rebound by Ruffin. Out to Iverson, and uh, Hamilton was face guarding on that play, but uh, the pass did get to Iverson. And Bell is hit by Michael Jordan. It was inadvertent. And Jordan, uh, a pat on the back to Rajah Bell. That is the first team foul against the Wizards, and it comes with 7.55 in the fourth. For Jordan, his second. Aaron McKee and Kevin Mutombo come in, so the Sixers will have Mutombo, Ruffin, Iverson, Bell, and McKee. Ruffin trying to set a screen. Leitner out with Lou. Here's Ruffin. Lost the ball. Leitner picks it up. Washington did an excellent job on the trap once again of Iverson off the dribble, forcing him to give the ball up. Seven and a half on the clock. Lou in heavy traffic. Gets it back from Leitner. He's got a bigger Ruffin. Ruffin is 6'8". Lou is 6 feet. 
Lou lets go and hits a three. Teron Lou hitting his first three-pointer of the game. He has nine points to go along with six assists. Well, when he was in college, he was an outstanding three-point shooter. When he came into the league, any time that that shot is there, he is not bashful. He will take it. That's why he got to guard him. And the offensive foul called against Dikembe Mutombo. And the Wizards have the ball in a nine-point lead. Leitner with Lou. Hamilton, Haywood, and Jordan for Washington trying to win only their second road game of the year. And a tough place to do it here in Philadelphia. Remember when we put up the stat at the end of the first quarter, Philadelphia was shooting 55%. At the end of three quarters, it's down to 41. They are struggling to get good looks at the best. Ruffin knocking the ball out of bounds and 10 on the shot clock. And uh, Christian Leitner slowly getting up. Meanwhile, the 76ers bring in Matt Harper for Raja Bill. Bell and Leitner is hobbling. Yes, he is. 22nd timeout signaled by Doug Collins. Takes the Doug wants Leitner out on the floor. We know that because he feels that high IQ, excellent passer, can make that perimeter jump shot anytime the defense breaks down and they kick it out to him. Now keep an eye on Christian at the top of your screen. See, he gets down inside here and you can see a little bit of a collision as he drops to the floor. Now he's obviously in pain. You can see right there, knee to knee with Matumbo. Leitner has scored six tonight, but as you mentioned, they need his uh, heady veteran uh, savvy on the floor. Well, he's moved the ball around, and he's made excellent passes. And you know yourself that when you have a guy like that on the floor, they have to pay attention. So a man is always committed to him. You cannot leave him in a situation. Well, if you stay with Leitner on the perimeter, that opens up the painted area. Tyrone Lou and Hamilton have been getting into that paint all night long. So Christian Leitner remains in the game and gets the inbound pass from Jordan who gets it back. Harpering defending. Jordan missing from the free throw line. And it's a nine point wizard lead in the Sixers. Plenty of time on the clock. Iverson firing. Steps back against Teron Liu. Allen Iverson had a cold spell in the third quarter, but uh, he may be regaining that shooting eye. 36 points in the game for Allen Iverson. Jordan Trapps now sets up the play with 14 on the shot clock. He's got Harpering all over him. And Iverson defending Teron Liu. Six now on the shot clock. Liu going to the basket. In trouble. Turnaround. And the rebound, Ruffin. Sixers doing a better job of clamping down defensively in that sequence. Double on Iverson. Ruffin travels. Or the offensive foul. Which is it? That was an offensive yes. foul. Great rotation on the defense that time. You're going to see the trap on the right side of the floor. And once you see it, they get it right back to Ruffin. And as Ruffin goes, he thinks he has a clear lane. But give the Wizards credit. They made that cover rotation perfectly. Timeout. Just under six minutes remaining in regulation. Here comes Leitner on a track. Now Leitner's man is Ruffin. He's going to come right into this area, receive a pass. But keep an eye right here as Hamilton comes in and takes the charge. Beautiful team defense. There's your trap, there's your rotation, there's your offensive foul. You know, the 76ers have had uh, some days off. The last game they played was Sunday when they lost at Toronto and the Wizards playing last night and losing in Cleveland. 75 points, their lowest point total of the year. And you'd think the Sixers would be laying in wait for the Wizards who have been struggling, but that has not been the case. Washington has moved up a notch tonight. Jordan leaves it for Lou, picked up on the trap. Back to Leitner, 10 on the shot clock. Here's Jordan. In the low post, the turnaround by Michael. 29 for Jordan. And a nine-point lead again for the Wizards. Two guys who are playing tonight. Haywood 
and Lou have added quickness, rebounding, and shot blocking to this unit. And it's, it's definitely made them a better defensive team as well as a better offensive team because Lou is always in the paint. How about uh, Iverson go dribbling into three Wizards and losing the ball and Washington got an advantage now. Their biggest lead was 10. There have been eight turnovers tonight by Allen Iverson. And most of them have come in the second half. Here is Haywood to Lou. Long rebound to Iverson. He'll try to push it up. Wizards are back, however. And a good foul by Teron Lou. To prevent the easy basket, Lou committing the personal foul. That is the second team foul on Washington. And they're going to take the ball out on the side. That was a smart foul by Lou. Main thing right now for Washington Wizards, you go to your main scores. You want to get high percentage shots with this group out there for Leitner and Lou and Hamilton. And then actually Michael is the critical guy. On the double team, can Michael find the free period for people under pressure? Coleman replaces Ruffin. And Iverson uh, dribbling a la the Harlem Globetrotters. And there is uh, McKee. And a force. Oh, that was one of the worst possessions the Sixers have had tonight. And they're not playing inspired basketball right now. Well, they're, they're leaving a lot to be desired. They're getting poor percentage shots, Nick. Jordan in traffic, goes out to Hamilton with the open jumper. Hamilton now with 24 points. He had eight in the first quarter, and now he has gone wild in the second half. Now remember, this is the team we told you. Michael Jordan is shooting 40%. Six other guys in the rotation are in the 30. Now tonight, they look like hey, this is a team that's a great shooting ball. Biggest lead of the game, 11 points, and Iverson controlling, and the foul is against Teron Lou. That'll be the third team foul, and number five against Lou. Well, you don't want to lose Teron Lou because he has been pesky against Allen Iverson as he was in the finals last year. He's done it defensively, and then at the offensive end of the floor, he has broken down the Philly defense. And six assists for Teron Lou, but he's one personal away from disqualification. With under four minutes to go in the fourth quarter, the lead is 11. Sunday's on. Second half of 16 points. Well, Hamilton comes into this game only shooting 39% for the year, but he is the team's second leading scorer. Now he has at least three breakaways out in the open floor in transition, but tonight he's been terrific off the dribble in that 12 to 18 foot game. He has been in that painted area, Dick, open, doing a great job on curls and in knocking down and shooting a high percentage. Well, this crowd is uh, dumbfounded. It is a silent crowd. For a while they got into it when the Sixers came back and made a run, but the Wizards now with 353 to go. This is a perfect example of a team taking a struggling team to light at home, all right, and coming in and just thinking that they're going to turn it on. And unfortunately for them, the second half, they've not been able to do that. Aaron McKee driving to the basket. And no, a three-second violation is called. Yep. Well, well, Leitner was down inside helping the referees count that. <laughs> three-second yep. violation. So Larry Brown. Has to be really puzzled at the Sixer effort. They have turned it over 20 times tonight. Unaccustomed as they are to that kind of uh, Well, in the NBA, you're trying to keep your turnovers anywhere between 14 and 15. Here is Lou. Nice. Nice space. Finds the space. Haywood getting the offensive rebound and a crucial new clock for the Wizards with 3.15 to go. And... Uh, Brendan Haywood calls a timeout with 3.14 to go. You love the shot attempt. High percentage shot. Haywood once again on the glass. Well, the Wizards with a 3.14 of pulling a big upset tonight. We'll be back. By 11, and now let's take a look at the world premiere of the TNT original Call Me Klaus. This December, you'll never guess who has to save Christmas. Whoopi Goldberg, Nigel Hawthorne, Call Me Claus. As in Santa Claus, not Klaus, as in, <laughs> anyway. Look, I'm involved in this game. How about, you mentioned before how Philadelphia shot 55% in the first quarter. Right. 
since then, 38%. And you've got to give a lot of credit to the Washington defense. Philly not getting great looks at the basket. Washington has done an excellent job in trapping Iverson and forcing him to give the ball up and then forcing him into bad areas on the floor. Three minutes remaining in regulation. The pick and roll. Haywood to oh, George. Nice Reverse layup draws the foul. That's all Michael wanted on that one. Great pass by Haywood. Now, right now, Haywood is just trying to feel his way around. He's not forcing any shots. Just watch as he cuts to the basket here. Keep a look to the right. Michael moving without the ball. Delivered the pass perfectly. Michael Jordan, seven of eight from the free throw line with under three minutes to go. And this is where Michael has thrived, but he misses the free throw. Well, fans, you can vote right now for the starters in NBA All-Star 2002. Just log on to NBA.com or America Online, AOL keyword NBA All-Star, and cast your ballot. Well, Jordan makes one out of two, and the Wizards lead by 12, their biggest lead of the game. Under three minutes to go, Iverson. Harpering fighting for the loose ball, but it comes down into Jordan's hands. Michael Jordan leading Haywood. Loose ball, Haywood recovers. Plenty of time here, plenty of time. They run the clock, play smart basketball. Jordan with 30 points. He has the ball now, guarded by Matt Harpering. Four on the shot clock. Here's Jordan, and McKee gets the rebound. 12 points, Wizards in front. Looking for their fourth one of the year. Harpering nails a three from the corner. Matt Harpering now with 13 points. That is the eighth three-pointer for the Sixers tonight. And it brings them to within nine. Hamilton with Lou. Lou playing with five fouls and under two minutes to go in the fourth. Hamilton looking for Jordan. He wants it. The nice double cut. team. Leitner behind the back to Haywood. And no call yet. And they say last touch by the Sixers with three on the shot clock. Bad pass by Leitner. No way was Haywood going to catch that pass. And it's a beautiful wrap around, except for one thing. The big guy's moving to the back bar. Keep an eye on this now. Leitner goes behind his back right there. You can see that the defense... Iverson got his hand in there to knock it away. Very risky. Oh, that would have been a tough catch. Three on the clock. Jordan, fall away at the buzzer. And here comes McKee. Four He's here. got Harpering and Iverson. Iverson driving in his foul. Yeah, you need a score. And if that's against Lou, and we'll check to see, that would be a six. And it is. Teron Lou is fouled out of the game. The crowd will cheer that event. So Lou, who has been a thorn in Allen Iverson's side, has fouled out, having scored nine points and seven assists. And Iverson will go to the free throw line to try to bring the Sixers to within seven. Want to remind you, coming up on Inside the NBA, Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley are in the studio and highlights from around the league, presented by Hyundai. Right now, if Iverson makes both of these foul shots, you're only down seven. Now you've got to go to your full court pressure. Anything can happen here right now. now. Mainly because Washington, they're anxious. They want the clock to move quickly. They've had few wins. They've been in very few games of this nature. Think about it. They've only played two games of six points or less out of the 13. Big thing for Philly right now is how good is your defense? Haywood goes out of the game, and he has played well. A solid game over 30 minutes. Chris Whitney replaces him. Hubert Davis replaced Teron Liu, who fouled out. And here's Iverson. And Iverson now with 38 points, matching the season's high. It's a seven-point lead. Yeah, Doug is going with all of his ball handlers and his high-percentage foul shooters right now. And they'll spread, spread the court here. Main thing is to stay out of the trap. Here's Whitney at the point. Whitney penetrating to Leitner, nine on the shot clock. And here is Whitney with a long range shot. Now, come on, Philly, you got a shot here. Now you got a good chance. And Iverson coming back. So the Wizards, after all of that setup, and throwing the ball away, Iverson into the hands of Jordan and Hamilton. How many times has he done that ahead of the field tonight? Four to be exact, he's got 26. The Iverson wanted to foul. 
but he never ran back on defense. That's a two by McKee, and it's 90 to 83. The lead is seven with one minute remaining in the fourth. Can the Wizards hold on on the road against the defending NFC East champions? No foul call on wow. Leitner, who was mugged in the center yes, court. He, he really was mugged, and he's laughing, but the main thing is that he did not lose the basketball. Five on the shot clock, roughing into the game, and Jordan will fire it up short. Jordan wants to hit the clincher so bad that he can taste it. And here comes the key. Driving to the basket against Leitner and Ruffin will tip it in with under a half a minute to go. It is a five point game, the Wizards in front. Still time here right now. And there is Leitner fouled by Allen Iverson. They had one foul to give. And that is the team sport that is not a shooting foul. The next one will be. Billy needs good pressure on the ball right now. And they've got to go for the steal. You got to go for the steal quickly. And if you don't get it, all right, you've got to go for the quick foul. Stop the clock. Clock manager. Can't let him run the clock. And there. finally, uh, Iverson forced a foul oh, for Whitney. And he will uh, send Whitney to the free throw line with uh, nearly 25 it's seconds it's remaining. It's fine. I told you at the beginning, there are two things Washington does well. They do not turn the ball over. Only 13 turnovers a game, which is fourth best in the league, and they are the number one foul shooting team in the league at 81%. And shooting 81% on the year is Whitney, who makes good on the first, and the lead is six. So uh, the Wizards coming back in dramatic fashion after what Doug Collins called a lightless and uninspired effort against the Cleveland Cavaliers. They were lost. They lost by 19 points, but tonight against the Sixers. They've come out and looked impressive. 92 to 85, and here is Iverson fighting for the offensive rebound and tips it in finally. Season's high for Iverson of 40. Come on now, the main thing right now is you cannot get lackadaisical. You cannot get lackadaisical when you're passing. You gotta shorten the passing range right now, but you cannot let them make a steal. And Claxton uh, fouling Richard Hamilton who will go to the line, you know, five points is a two possession game. And so the Wizards must make their free throws. Hamilton, an 87% shooter. At this time in the game, when you're scrambling like this, you always go for the steal first. You're never thinking foul first. You go for the steal first, then if you didn't get the steal, then you foul. Look on Larry Brown speaks volumes. Oh yeah, I mean, he's very upset. He told us before the game, you know, it's like a training camp. Four out of your five regulars join the team late. Iverson and McKean miss five games because of surgery. Then you have Coleman and Matt Harpering. But the key, which we said at the top, no bench production. Can they continue right, the rest of the year and run a good average and then play playoff time? But that's four million should allow them to pick up a quality player somewhere along the line. And a huge win for the Wizards and Doug Collins with a rare smile on his face as he applauds his team. If he was concerned about effort, he got it tonight in spades from the Washington Wizards who, having lost nine out of 10, have upset the defending Eastern Conference champions by a score of 94 to 87. Let's send it out to Craig Sager. Well, Michael, after going one and nine the last 10, your coach was upset. You said the team stinks. Why was Yoder so much better tonight? I just think uh, the guys took the responsibility of just coming out and playing hard. I mean, uh, if we play like this in Cleveland, we may have a better chance of winning, but I think that was embarrassing. I think the guys felt that, and we felt we can have a better effort. And we came in here and just basically played sound basketball. We stuck together, played solid defense. Got good shots, helped each other out. Next thing you, know, you know, you got to win. This is the first time all year you've had Tyrone Liu and also Brendan Hayward on the floor together with you. We saw what a difference they can make tonight. How will that change this team? Well, they're two young kids. I think it's going to help this franchise a whole lot. You know, once they get adjusted to, you know, playing within, the, you know, Doug's system, I think that's going to help us. Brendan gives us a big size, shot block in the back, good rebounding. As you can see, Ty Lue's going to penetrate. You know, he's going to play solid defense, and he hit some big shots for us tonight. I mentioned your tendonitis at the beginning of the show. I know you don't make any excuses, but you've been icing it all day, stem treatment, anti-inflammatories. Is it going to get better? I hope so. I mean, that's what tendonitis is all about. I mean, you know, I, I probably got to stay off of it for some time, but, you know, knowing me, I probably won't stay off of it, and I'm just going to come out and keep, you know, if it feels good, I'm going to play. If it doesn't feel good, then I have to 
sit down. After this big win on the road, Charles Barkley wants to know if the NBA will let us add some more Wizard games. <laughs> I don't know. If we play like tonight, I'd love to be on TV, but if we play like in Cleveland, I wouldn't want to watch us. All right, thanks a lot. Let's go back to Dick and Yubi. What a difference tonight makes as the Washington Wizards win. And it was Richard Hamilton who had 20 of his 28 points in the second half to support Michael Jordan's 30 points in 38 minutes. Allen Iverson, a season's high, 40 points in a losing cause. As the Wizards go to 4-10, and 10, the Sixers drop to 500 at 7-7. Seven and seven. Our thanks to our statistician, Marty Aronoff, once again our final score, Wizards 94, Sixers 87. So for Hubie Brown and Craig Sager, our producer Jay Hoover, director Lonnie Dale, Rodney Vaughn, Jeff Harris, Gregson Frampton, and the rest of our TNT crew, I'm Dick Stockton. Good night from Philadelphia. We'll send you to Inside the NBA with Ernie Johnson after this break.